Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalam ala Sayyidil Anbiya wa Mursalin Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim Alhamdulillah, all praises and gratitude for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to continue with another reminder from the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the compilation of Imam Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala. And today we will be going into our fourth hadith and it's our fourth week of reminder. And this fourth hadith in the compilation after Imam Nawawi rahimahullah mentioned, started off with the hadith about actions and our intentions being important for our action, and then gave us two hadith reminders about our iman and importance of the pillars of Islam. Now the fourth hadith again entails with something that has to do with our iman and is a part and a pillar of our iman uh, or belief as a Muslim. The hadith narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, a very famous companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, Inna ahadakum yujma'u khuluquhu fi batani ummihi arba'ina yawman. That really the creation of any one of you takes place when he is assembled in his mother womb. For 40 days he is a drop of fluid. Then from that he becomes a clot of a, for a similar period for that of 40 days. Thereafter it is that of a lump looking like which has been chewed for a similar amount of period for a similar amount of time for that of 40 days. So that's three phases of 40 days. And then after that an angel is sent to him which, which breeds ruh, the soul into the body. And this angel is commanded to write four decrees. To write down the matter, the predestiny and the destiny for this child or this unborn that will be coming in the face of the earth. And that which is right is that one is that of his risk, his provision. Second, his lifespan. Third, his deeds, good or bad. And fourth, whether he'll be from among the wretched or the blessed. Then Abdullah bin Mas'ud to continue, he said, I swear by Allah that one of you may perform the deeds of the people of paradise you'll perform such good deeds throughout your entire life until between you and Jannah will be just the span of an arm's length that's how close the emphasis is that you'll be to always attain in Jannah because of your good deeds but then what will writ what was written for you will overpass you and will overtake you destiny will overtake you what was decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to pass and then even though that span of an arm's length is between you and paradise, by what was decreed for you, you will carry out that action towards the end of your life and you will end up into Jahannam, into the fire. And similarly, a person will live his life and will carry out actions like that which will take him closer towards the hellfire, such a distance that it will only be between him and the hellfire, Qadr as in that amount of that of an arm span and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continue and he said that now what was decreed for him فَيَسْبَقُوا عَلَيْهِ kitab, whatever was decreed for him will overtake him will overpass him and then he will do action he will carry out an action for the people of Jannah and he will be made to enter Jannah so that is the translation of the hadith that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and who mentioned where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Address them and reminding them about Qadr, about destiny, about the predestiny Allah the predestined Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for us, the decree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for mankind. Now Imam Nawawi Rahimahullah brought this hadith after the very first three hadiths because it is an aspect that has to do with our Iman. As I mentioned, it is a pillar of Iman. This Qadr is an Arabic word which means Allah predestination or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's measurement, something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has recorded of everything for mankind. 
and it is an aspect and it is a support and it is a main pillar of our iman of our belief last week and the week before the last two hadiths we discussed and we mentioned of the pillars of islam that are five pillars of islam our belief iman our salah our zakat our hajj our fasting now with regards to iman they are pillars of iman also that includes our belief like that aman to billah we believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his angels his books his messenger on the day of judgment and the last of that aspect which is which completes the six pillars of iman is that believing in destiny in the good and the bad that it is this time from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever destiny it is it is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it is part of our belief it is part of our qadr um, of our iman that we believe in the qadr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that no muslim's faith no muslim iman will truly be complete or will be complete unless he believes in whatever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree that whatever befalls him it was from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree and it could have not missed him and whatever has missed him it could have not afflict him it could have not befallen him that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran that verily everything we have created is with this predestination everything was created based on qadr in kulla shayin khalaqnahu bi qadr that everything was created based on qadr so whatever disaster whatever test whatever tribulation is happening on the face of the earth whatever has happened to an individual whatever is there with his wealth with his family many people have numerous offsprings many some and some people allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not blessed with that privilege that many some people live their whole life without any offspring that is all from the decree of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of those who are known to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before they even happen so in regards to the qadr in regards to the predestination of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it comprises four aspects one is that of knowledge they believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge encompass every aspect encompass everything that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ilm allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge whatever matter it is whether major or minor whatever the time frame is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge encompass it all whatever action a mankind a human has to take whatever action mankind is to do whatever thing mankind intends to do it is all encompassed within allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge secondly is that of pre-recording the the belief allah subhanahu wa ta'ala record everything in the lawful mahfuz in the preserved tablet that is what it by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the quran in chapter 2 verse 70 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do you not know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is in the heaven and the earth? That verily all that is in a record, all of that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in the heaven and the earth is in a record. And indeed that is very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regard to this, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As radiallahu anhu, a companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he narrates that he heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has recorded the measurement of all matters pertaining to the creation 50,000 years before he created the heavens and the earth. The decree for every matters pertaining to the creation to the makhluk Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has recorded 50,000 years before the creation of the heaven and the earth. And this hadith, this narration is found in Sahih Muslim under the chapter of decree. The third aspect which comprise in our belief in the qadr which comprise in the knowledge and comprise in the aspect of qadr is that of the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is to have the belief that nothing whether related to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether, whether related to sorry whether related to the action taken by the slave of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can occur without allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that he created whatever he wishes and whatever he whatever he chooses whatever he desires that is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make come to pass and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma yasha allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does whatever he wishes 
he does not need the permission of mankind to carry out something. So that is a belief that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes, that will what happen. It is not because we want it this way, or it's not because I want it this way, or because so and so person wanted it this way. But it is only because of the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi was that is why when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the companions came and asked him regarding of an incident of the people of Bani Israel and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him this was regard to the people the, the story Surah Kaf Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked a question regarding to the people who was there the boys of the cave and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him that he will give the answer and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran and said reminder for us also وَلَا تَقُولَنَّ لِشَيْءٍ إِنِّي فَاعِلُونَ ذَلِكَ غَدَى إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ That we do not say that we will do something in the future or tomorrow except that we say if Allah's will. Insha'Allah if Allah wills. That is why we say that because it is all with Allah subhanahu ta'ala's will. It is all with Allah subhanahu ta'ala's decree. Even though we may have the intention but we do not know if it will happen. It will only be by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That reminder is here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a reminder for us mankind until the day of judgment. That our belief is that nothing, whether related to our action, whatever related to our wealth, whatever related to our decision, will not be happening and will, cannot take place except with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the four aspect in regard to the belief of the Qadr is that of the creation. Believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all creation. Whatever the creation possesses, whatever creation we know, whatever we do not know. Some scholars have mentioned that there have been approximately 70,000 creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which many or some of them is known to us and some of them is not known to us. We know the basic creation that even every day the scientists, they are finding and they are researching and they are looking in deep into the ocean looking for different creation of Allah different type of fishes different species of fishes and even on the face of the earth we know many many of people watches and many of people follow documentaries and different aspects of our day-to-day -day life and scientists have been doing researches daily they are looking into different species daily even the Amazon rainforest something that is there it is in the face of the earth, but yet mankind cannot even go into the depths of it to see the different types of creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, our belief also includes that of whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, every aspect of the creation, whatever attributes they have created, whatever action they have done, it is only again from the disposal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in chapter 39 verse, 30, verse 62 Allah subhanahu wa says Allah Allah khaliqu kulli shay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of everything and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is a disposer of affairs over everything again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that he has created each and every aspect he has created each and everything and he has determined it he has made it precise with determination Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has Beautified it in each and every own way, each and every aspect, each and everything, each and every creation in its own way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created it such that this is a reminder for mankind that in these aspects, in these aspects of Qadr that we realize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these four things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's decree is there. That no one of us, we can form it any way, even if we think we may be able to invent something. Look at it for example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creation of mankind that for centuries mankind have been there but how many people how many with all the advanced technologies that scientists have had or mankind have created can they ever try to create another mankind can they ever try to create another human being like that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created so part of our belief accepting the color of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepting what they Creation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have did accepting the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only matter that takes place only by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission. And with all of these regards, let us not forget many a times mankind by us just mere hearing this saying 
of qadar of predestiny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala predestined something we believe that many times we have no power or we have no control over the actions that we have taken but let us be reminded scholars have mentioned over time and time again that mankind a believer his life is between that of hope and fear and the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in this regard the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is different than a regular fear that we may know of in our lifetime and our day-to-day -day basis for example if we are out hunting and we were to come face to face with a beast we will all be scared we'll run if we were to come face to face with a tiger or with a lion we will run we'll be afraid of that because that fear will make us run away from something if there is a fire we are afraid of the fire we don't go to the fire we run away from it but the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is completely opposite when as mankind we have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of running away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draw us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it brings us close that we want to get attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we want to come closer towards the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well we have the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness we have the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and having the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also bring us that we know whatever wrong we have done we can ask for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will be able to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever difficulty we have in whatever in whatever wrong we have done we will not be despondent from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so as for that mankind also we should not forget that we still have power and we have control over the action that we choose we have a will of our own that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran in chapter 78 verse 13 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about one own wills he says that he whosoever wills as mankind who wills may take towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may take a return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the verse in the Quran telling us that if you so whosoever wills he takes a path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so show us that yes as mankind we still have an action to choose we still have a way that we can choose a way of life that we can choose that is why if it was not the case Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not have told us that if we wish we take the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam many times even when he talked regarding to taking the pathway of knowledge or regarding to taking the way of doing an action and in all of these regards from the hadith that we mentioned at the beginning at the ending of the hadith when it states that a person will does the action of Jannah up until he is close towards an arm span towards Jannah but because of decree he will do an action towards Jahannam and he will be going towards the fire of Jahannam it all come back towards the hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reminded us about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the mafhum that innama al-a'malu bil khawatim that verily actions are according towards the end all actions is judged according towards the ending it is not how good we start something it is not how good we started off for those who knows about sports for those who played basketball for those who played baseball for those who play cricket it is not how good you start the innings but it is how well you end off the innings it is always mentioned at the ending of the innings if you end off if you you go off at the ending well they always see you go off on a high you have that more inspiration you have that more motivation you have that more courage in your side your whole team has that more courage and you're so much motivated you're more empowered to do good in the second innings so similarly our action it is not how we started it but how well we come towards the ending of our action how well do we end off our action similarly our life it is not how well we have started our life but coming closer towards the end of our life how well are we how well are we going to end our life and that is the beauty of it because none of us know again because of decree and predestination none of us know when we will die but we all know we have to die none of us know that this is the time frame of our life that okay I will live for 45 years and that's it after that I have no more time in this life so only when I reach 40 years the last five years I will do proper action I will terminate the end of my life good but that is a beauty we have no idea when it is 
So that is why throughout our life, every day of our life should live as if it is the last day of our life. Every day of our life should live in such a way that we try to do the best. We try to make our best decision, decision so that inshallah, when we when we are to die, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, instead of us having to turn away and overtake him by that decree or having that decree overtake us, that in each and aspect of each and every day of our life will be like that, living like that if it's our last day, our best day of our life. And inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us that we also die in Iman and we will not be from those unfortunate ones who will be taken away from that path, the path of Surat al Mustaqim, the path towards Jannah. I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can have the correct belief in Qadr and predestination of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let us not forget that being an important aspect and being an important part of our Iman, a pillar of our Iman. It is comp scholars have mentioned that it is compulsory upon us that regards to Qadr, we stop or we don't indulge in such discussions of Qadr which is beyond a limit, which is beyond a boundary, boundary and hudud of our and our capacity, our mind. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ilm, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qadr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ilm of his qadr is over all knowledge, is over all of mankind and compass. As even the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the reminder I've given at the beginning, I've recited the ayat in the Quran, which the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the angels, which we know as you and I, they're even a better creation than us because they do not sin. They only command, they only follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. La ma wa ma yu'marun. That the angels, the malaika, they do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not even to the iota of a blinking of an eye, but they follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command, do whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command them to do. And those same angels were the ones that made a supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana. That glory be to you, O oh Allah. Exalted be you. That we have no knowledge except what you have taught us. So similarly, the knowledge of Qadr, the knowledge of the unseen, this is within Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's capacity and within Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's unknown knowledge. So even Malaika, even the angels, even the Nabiyeen and the Rasul, the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they also don't have this unseen knowledge but it is only that knowledge which was given to them as we know the story of Yusuf, uh, of Musa alayhi salam with Khidr alayhi salam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to Khidr to accompany him to teach him some lesson and Khidr alayhi salam had different knowledge from Musa alayhi salam in those three instances which is mentioned in Surah Kaf also so as Muslims and as believers it is incumbent upon us that we hold fast to our Iman, we make practice in our Iman, and we strengthen our Iman so that we can become pious Muslim, we can become bet better believer and better mankind to ourselves, to our family, to our neighbors, to our kit and kins, and most importantly to us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He help us all, that we, we can become better mu'mineen, better believers, and we can become pioneers of Islam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us all may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the understanding of these few reminders and these ahadiths that we're doing and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our effort and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our past sins and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our deceased relatives and friends and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them all Jannatul Firdaus Jazakumullah khair Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li walakum wa lisa'il muslimin Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.